In this problem, we're told a coordinate system in meters is constructed on the surface of a pool table, and three objects are placed on the table as follows. A 2 kilogram object at the origin of the coordinate system, a 3 kilogram object at 0, 2, and a 4 kilogram object at 4, 0. Find the resultant gravitational force exerted by the other two objects on the object at the origin. So you can imagine this is what we have going on, right? So these are our three objects. One's at the origin, one's at, this is 0, 4, right? So it's 4 meters away from this object. And then we have one, or sorry, this is 4, 0. Then we have one that's 0, 2, right? So 2 meters away from the middle. All right, so what do we want to do? So what we're trying to do is find the resultant gravitational force, right? So we're trying to find the resultant gravitational force. So the first thing you need to know is how to find gravitational force. So we can call that F sub G or gravitational force. And the formula for it is G multiplied by M1 times M2 over R squared. So this is the formula you can use to solve for the gravitational force. And so keep in mind, we're trying to find the resultant, meaning we're going to find two gravitational forces, and then we're going to take, and we're going to find the resultant of those two, right? So the two forces are going to be, right? So we're trying to find uh, by the other two objects. So these are going to be exerting forces, right, on this object, and we're going to take the resultant of them. But first we need to find them individually, and then we can find the resultant. So this is the formula to find them, right? So it's G, and so G is just called the gravitational constant. And so basically... G is just a number you have to memorize, which is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, right? So 10 to the minus 11, and then it's Newton meters squared over kilogram squared. The units aren't that important because they just cancel out. But essentially, this is G, and this is a number you have to memorize for when we plug it into these formulas, right? So if you want to find the gravitational force, you have to know G, okay? M1 and M2, so I did this generally, but M1 and M2 are just going to be the two objects that you're finding in this case, right? So we're going to do this two times. We're going to find the gravitational force between this object and this object, right? So if we did that, this would be, we're calling this object 1, so we would plug in M1, and then instead of M2, right, because we're using object 3, we would use M3. So it's just your two objects, right? But when we do this one, we're going to use M1 and M2. And then R is just the distance between the two objects. So in this case, when we do this one, it's going to be 4 meters, and when we do this one, it's going to be 2 meters, right? So you just square that. So let's just go ahead and start by doing one. So F, G, and so what I'm going to do is start with this one. So you could say this is one on three or three on one. They're the same, right? So you'd say the force of gravity on one or one on three, right? So we just need to plug in the numbers for these two. So let's start, um, right? So we know G, G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, right? Multiplied by the mass of one, right? The mass of one of our objects, which in this case is mass of one, which is two right, two kilograms, then we're multiplying by the mass of object two, which is going to be this object, right, which is going to be four kilograms, and then you're dividing by the radius squared. So the distance between the two is the radius, right, which is four, four squared, right, it's just 16, but I'm just going to leave it as four squared. So just 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times two, right, and then you want to multiply it by, right, yeah, multiply by four and then divide by four squared. So when you do this, you're going to get it equals about 3.34 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons. So this is going to be the force of gravity of, right, so it's uh, this object acting on this object, right? But they're, they're going to be the same number anyway. So it's just 3.34 times 10 to the minus 11. That's not your answer. This is just going to be one of the components, right? So you can call this, um, I'll just call it F1. So force 1, and now we want to find force 2. So we'll call this one force 1. Now we got to find this one force 2. So FG... Right? And keep in mind, this is force 2. So we're just going to do the same thing as here, but with these two objects instead. right? Because we did this one. Now we need to do this one. And once we have them both, we can take the resultant. So again, it's just G, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, multiplied by the mass of your object 1, which is just the uh, object at the middle, right? which is 2. Object, uh, the second one, right? which is M2, which is 3 kilograms, dividing by the distance between the two, which is the radius, 2 right? So two squared. So you want to go ahead and plug this in, right? So if you do 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 2 times 3 divided by 2 squared, you're going to get it equals, right? So I'm going to call this F2, right? So this is force 2. It's equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons. So 1 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons, that's F2. So now we have F1 and F2. What we're going to want to do, right, is find, uh, the resultant. And so the way you take the resultant is just by, if you think of it like a triangle, right? So imagine it's a triangle. You should know how to do this already, but imagine this one right here is F1, right? So F1, imagine like a triangle. So F1, F2, and what we're trying to do is find this side, right? So you can use Pythagorean. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So this is Pythagorean theorem. This is A, this is B, this is C, 
right? And if you square both sides, or basically you can use this formula in order to solve for C. So C is just going to be equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. But you should already know how to do this by now. But yeah, so what we got to do is just do C or going to be the resultant force, right? I'm just going to call this one F sub G because it's going to be the actual gravitational force on this, right? The total. So it's just square root of A squared plus B squared. So A, it's just F1 and F2, right? These are A and B. So 3.34 times 10 to the minus 11, right? Squared. And so I'm running out of room, but it's going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 11 squared. Let's keep in mind the things in parentheses. So basically, square root of 3.34 times 10 to the minus 11 squared plus 1 times 10 to the minus 10, uh, right? Or sorry, this is 10. Yeah, 10. Sorry, I plugged in the wrong number. But 1 times 10 to the minus 10 uh, squared. And when you do this, you're going to get f sub g is equal to 1.05 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons. So this is going to be... Uh, Right, the resultant gravitational force, but we also want to find the angle at which uh, w which it's at. Right, so this is just the force, but we want to find where it's at. Right, so relative. Right, we got to find the the angle. Right, so magnitude and direction. So this is just the magnitude. So 1.05 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons. Now, in order to find the angle theta, right, where it's at, uh, we know theta. You can find the angle theta just by taking the arc tangent of your y component of your x component. So this is the y component. This is the x component. Right, so this is the y component. Right, remember this is what we solved for here, and then this was the x. So it's just one times ten to the minus ten newtons, and then you're dividing by uh, the x component, right? Which is three point three four times ten to the minus eleven newtons. So you just want to take the arc tangent of this, right? So once you do that, you're going to get seventy one point five three, and so this is going to be in degrees, right? So seventy one point five three degrees. That's going to be the angle, right? So if this is ninety, it's going to be like right here. Right or somewhere somewhere like that. So this is basically your direction. So it's basically seventy one point five three degrees above the x axis, and then the the magnitude is one point zero five times ten to the minus ten newtons. So these are like your answers, right? So this and this, but yeah. So these are gonna be your answers, and hopefully you found this useful.